I feel like it it wasn't maybe people weren't in the mood for that at the time. You know, maybe maybe it was the cover. Maybe, like, I don't know, who knows? From B.O.B.'s conspiracy theories to his death hoax, it all seemed to end his music career for good. Usually when someone with such influence and fan following are involved in controversies, they still at least establish a satisfactory career. You can take the example of Kanye West. But B.O.B.'s conspiracy theories from celebrity cloning to Holocaust denial and not being able to back up his career with some good music made him a laughing stock in front of the audience. Hello everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel. Were you a fan of B.O.B.? Today we'll learn about what happened to B.O.B. and how he committed career suicide. But before diving into the video, don't forget to like, comment and share. Also, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified for our next video. Background Bobby Ray Simmons Jr. aka B.O.B. was born on 15th November 1988. He's an American rapper, singer, songwriter, record producer and conspiracy theorist. He was born in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. He attended Columbia High School in Decatur, Georgia, where he played trumpet in a school band. Unlike millions of people who do not know what to do in their life, B.O.B. knew when he was only in sixth grade that he wanted to be a musician. Initially, his father, who was a pastor, disapproved of his choices until he realized that he is using music as a creative outlet and a form of therapy. He dropped out of high school in ninth grade when he landed a record deal. Career Beginnings B.O.B. met his mentor and co-manager Brian Richardson, also known as B. Rich, in 2002 when he was just 14. At that time, B.O.B. sold his first ever beat to Slip and Slide's former recording artist for the song I Am The Cookie Man. Just in the beginning of his career, he thought he had established himself. He said, I went and blew all of my money on stuff like a chain and ballin'. Soon I was broke again, but I learned two important things from it. Make sure I save money and that I was hooked on music. To perfect his craft, he performed different gigs at open mics and underground venues. Since he was underage in 2006, B. Rich managed to sneak him inside a nightclub called Club Crucial, owned by T.I., an Atlanta-based rapper. He then sang a self-produced song titled Cloud9, and among the attendees, there was a producer, T.J. Chapman, CEO of T.J.'s DJs, who agreed to co-manage B.O.B. A month later, he led B.O.B. to sign with Atlantic Records and Rebel Rock Entertainment. He made his first ever single for Atlantic Records, which reached the top five of Billboard's hip hop singles chart. Fame. B.O.B. gained attention in 2007 while his song positioned at number five on Billboard bubbling under Hot 100 singles. Later, the remix version of this song, Haters Everywhere, was incorporated in a video game called Fight Night Round 4 featuring Rich Boy. Later in 2008, he released I'll Be In The Sky, which reached number 15 on Billboard bubbling under Hot 100 singles and number 13 on Top 100 Rap Songs of 2008 by About.com. Then he came up up with back-to-back -back singles like Generation Lost, Don't Let Me Fall and On Top of the World. B.O.B. was featured on XXL magazine in their issue called Hip Hop's Class of 2009. Adding to that, in October 2008, he also featured on Vibe's cover along with some other young musicians who were identified as young, promising talent. Debut Album B.O.B.'s debut album, The Adventures of Bobby Ray, was released on 27th April 2010 under Atlantic and T.I.'s Grand Hustle Records. But before the release of his album, he released a few mixtapes for the promotion of his album. His mixtape featured guest appearances of a few reputable musicians such as Bruno Mars, J. Cole, Asher Roth, Charles Hamilton, and Playboy Trey. He rose to fame with his debut single Nothing On You featuring Bruno Mars that reached number one in both the USA and UK and Airplanes featuring Hayley Williams which also topped several different charts. B.O.B.'s debut album topped the US Billboard 200 ranking and in 2016 his album was certified 2X Platinum, an award presented by RIAA when a certain number of albums and singles are sold. Awards He was nominated for five categories in 2011 in one of the most prestigious Grammy Awards, and then again in 2012 for Album of the Year, but sadly never won any. He was also nominated for several many other awards, but won only two. One for Nothing On You as the Best Song of the Year in Soul Train Music Awards, and second for Airplanes as Choice Music in the category called Hook Up in Teen Choice Awards. Downfall. From featuring on Biggest Magazines to topping ranking charts, B.O.B. was living a dream. He created such a huge buzz that he even opened for Eminem and Jay-Z for their The Home and Home tour. B.O.B. had the potential to be one of the biggest rappers of all time, and his career was meant to go up. Then what really happened? How did someone with such potential suddenly be forgotten and is nowhere to be found? B.O.B. claimed that he had two mic personalities, B.O.B. and Bobby Ray. B.O.B., the rapper, embraces more of a stereotypical street rapper lifestyle. This side gave 
gave him recognition and fame. On the flip side, Bobby Ray represented a rock star with some amazing songwriting skills. This side turned him into an international pop star. But we bring to you his third personality, which is a conspiracy theorist. Musicians in the industry like Loop Fiasco, Immortal Technique have had opposing views to the conventional society beliefs as well, but B.O.B. took it a bit too far. Everybody knew that his career started rolling down the hill when he released his second studio album called Strange Clouds. This album only sold half the original copies that they had hoped, and with his third album, Underground Luxury, they tried embracing his rapper side, but it turned out to be bland and dull. Since both his personalities failed, he tried another route to rebrand himself and to stay relevant. B.O.B. came out on Twitter as a flat earth believer. He tweeted more than 50 times, emphasizing on Earth being flat, and that NASA is hiding something regarding the edge of the world. Not just that, he went on and posted some meaningless diagrams about the Earth as well. In one of his tweets, he wrote, I'm going up against the greatest lies in history. You've been tremendously deceived. That's when Neil deGrasse Tyson, an astrophysicist, decided to respond and explain the theory of why the Earth is flat. In his series of tweets, he replied, Earth's curve indeed blocks 150, not 170 feet of Manhattan, but most buildings in Midtown are way taller than that. Polaris is gone by 1.5 degrees less latitude. You'd never been south of Earth's equator, or if so, you've never looked up. Flat Earth is a problem only when people in charge think that way. No law stops you from regressively basking in it. This Twitter spat turned into a rap battle when B.O.B. released a diss track called Flatline. In response to that, Tyson's nephew dropped his diss track called Flat to Fact featuring Tyson. B.O.B. was able to gain a lot of attention with this drama, which he might not have achieved since the release of his debut album. This was known to be the most amusing yet most pathetic rap beef of the decade. Things just didn't end there. He even went further with a campaign on GoFundMe of $200,000 to launch satellites and prove that the Earth is flat. To much surprise, he managed to complete the target and then up the donation to a million dollars. As if this wasn't enough, he continued with his insane conspiracy theories such as celebrity cloning and Holocaust denial. He incorporated those theories in his albums like Elements, Ether, The Upside Down and Naga. These albums were an absolute mess. After all of this drama, the public's view of him changed from being someone who was hungry for attention to someone who was mentally unsound. Social media breakdown. B.O.B. even had a social media meltdown when a page declared him dead in an internet hoax. A page on Facebook called R.I.P. B.O.B. emerged and falsely wrote at about 11 a.m. E.T. on Sunday, September 29, 2019, our beloved rapper B.O.B. passed away. B.O.B. was born on November 15, 988 in Winston-Salem. He'll be missed but not forgotten. Please show your sympathy and condolences by commenting on and liking this page. This post received a lot of attention and millions of likes in just a few hours. Then B.O.B.'s representatives quickly denied the rumors of his death. My sympathies are definitely with B.O.B. because anyone would be upset and explode if they hear the news of them passing away. But B.O.B. took it a tad bit far. He came on Instagram Live and called out his fans and said that they only loved him when they thought he'd die, but not when he needed them most. Concluding remarks. Although Naga was supposed to be his last album in 2018, he came out with two more albums in 2020 and 2021. He even started a podcast series on his YouTube channel called The Bobcast, where he talks about his conspiracy theories. B.O.B. didn't really evolve his music nor his personality over time. Several artists in history were able to sustain their career despite being involved in controversy. However, B.O.B. wasn't as talented as his competitors in the music industry. He just looked ignorant and foolish when he came out with his conspiracy theories. In a statement, he mentioned that he's sacrificing his career by bringing out these theories for us, but actually his career was already over. Now let's see what's in store for him in the future. Comment down below if you were a B.O.B. fan once. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell button to get the notifications. See you in the next one.